For anybody who's ever did time, you know not every institution is going to be the same. Some are going to feel easier to do time at than others. For this video, I'm going to be telling y'all my opinion on what was considered the worst time for me while I was in prison down here in the state of Florida. So y'all sit back and enjoy this real spill. Let's do it. Ha <laughs> ha, Dom the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent? Got me bent. Got lacks on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing. Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see you ass, you gon' need airlifted. What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K Fraud TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead, do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I know I ain't posting in about a week, but it's been a very busy week. You know that I'm a single dad. I do what I got to do. I got a couple kids out here. Kind of hard to get to making a video schedule like I used to do, but, you know, I'm still trying to make it happen. But for this video here, I'm going to be talking about what was considered the worst time for me in prison now every institution is going to be different okay so it's all on you you know your your opinion on how to do time may be different everybody that does their time different than everybody you know what i'm saying i might do something to pass my time a whole lot different than what you do when you do time so whatever works best for you is going to work best for you and whatever worked best for me y'all are going to find out in this video now some institutions are laid back you know there's not no drama there's barely any fights there isn't no beatings from the guards there isn't no wars there isn't no stabbings there isn't no drugs there isn't no hitting people with locks there isn't no extortion those are the type of camps that a lot of people would rather go to than the ones that have everything that i just named and i don't blame you because what other way would feel better to get your time over with than a less violent camp a camp to where you feel like you ain't got to worry about nothing. You know, you just do your time and then go home. Okay, well, for me, the violent camps, the camps that have everything that I just named, those camps, from experience, are the camps to me that make time go by. Because there is always something going on. There is always something that, even though it you're not thinking of it at the time, but you are, like, focusing on situations that are occurring back to back all the time and things that may go on that you don't think you're worried about but by you being you know on your 10 toes and involved in these things you're 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 a part of it so you're you're actually making your time fly it's got your mind off of the time that you actually are stuck in there doing you see what i'm saying and every time i landed at a camp that wasn't really you know that serious that ratchet you know it it dragged okay like literally it went by so slow that literally weeks felt like months months felt like fucking years years felt like forever okay and i'm talking about like literally like if there is nothing going on there is no type of drama there is no type of you know fighting no type of gambling you know no type of different type of incidents just a bunch of people all you know directed traffic with no crashing you know that right there to me is like a dead stop and you literally have people in prison that travel to past time ones that literally want to be transferred you got people that will check in to get away from a camp on purpose just because of how slow their bid feels like it's going because when you're in these type of institutions it dead ass feels like you're in a dead stop. It feels like you're just there. So all you're doing with all that time now is dwelling and thinking about how much time you have. You see what I'm saying? Not for me. The camp that I would consider was the worst time for me was DeSoto Annex down here in Florida. Okay, I went to DeSoto. That's where I EOS'd from. That's where the end of my sentence took place. That's where I got released at. And I'm going to tell y'all why DeSoto, okay? Now, when I was at Calhoun first, you know, there was a lot of fighting, you know, a lot of lining it up. You know, I was in G-Dorm, which was gangland, and we had Friday night fights. You had a lot of things going on to where you, like, 
you needed to pay attention to everything except for your calendar. You know what I'm saying? Like these type of institutions, you know, you can't help but to be involved in shit because it's all around you, you know? Now, there wasn't that many stabbings. There was a couple, you know, people getting cut, buck 50 and stuff. It was mostly fighting. But I was in a JIT dorm, so I had to be aware at all times, you know? I can't even leave a part of my mindset open to think about the streets, to think about how much time I have left. You know what I'm saying? So that kept me on my P's and Q's and got my mind off of how long I literally had to do being a part of the state of Florida. You know, being a piece of their property. You see? Now, I felt like, you know, at the time while I was there, you know, my mind wasn't on the time, but say five months went by. When I think about it, be like, damn, dog, I only been here five months. You know, another three months go by. You know, I'm not thinking about the time during it but then after three months i'm like damn i only been here eight months now you know so it still went by slow you feel me it just i didn't think about it you know what i'm saying then i ended up going to charlotte ci which can which was the camp that made the time fly the most okay to where it's like unheard of of anybody even having a calendar you know like nobody has the time to even think about the time you know what i'm saying that was a totally different ball game and then me going there and everything that was going on there all the violence and every single thing all the drugs the stabbings the fights the overdoses the guards situations the you know things that were going on so much to where it was the opposite of how calhoun was because calhoun like i said you would do the time not thinking about it. And then when you look, you're like, damn, I've only been here three months. Damn, I've only been here five months. No, Charlotte, you would do it when you look back on it like, damn, I've been a year already. You know, then, oh shit, it done been two years already. Like that camp right there, my time was flying like this because there was so much stuff going on. Okay, literally. All you felt in the air at the time was tension. All right. Charlotte CI was one of those institutions that at the end of the day, you don't know if you'll make it home while you're in there. It's, it's, it's to the point to where bad things feel fun because that's all you see in there. The only fun you're going to have is bad things. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's literally what it is. And then after a while you adapt to it. You know what I'm saying? And it makes it to where you're a part of this bad shit now. You see what I'm saying? Calhoun, you had, you know, fighting and different things like that, but you had bad things that took place, and then you had good things that took place, and the good things obviously weren't the bad things. At Charlotte, the good and the bad were both bad things. You see what I'm saying? And that literally blows my mind when I think about it, because my fastest time going by in prison was when I was in harm's way the most. The most dangerous camp that I was at was where my time went by the quickest, you see? And then, of course, I went to DeSoto from there after I got transferred for K-Frog TV. I landed at DeSoto, that's where I EOS that. Did my last, I'd say 100 days there, or something like that. And that was the longest time I ever felt like I did inside a prison. Them 100 days were the longest of my whole bid, all right? and. I know a portion of why, not just because it was laid back, there wasn't no problems and shit like that. You may see a little scuffle go down. Like I said before, I've seen two people get hit my whole time there, you know, but it was also because I was at the end of my bid, okay? The end of your bid is going to be the longest time. If you got 10 years, 5 years, 15 years, your first year is going to drag is gonna feel like forever your last year is gonna drag it's gonna feel like forever see what I'm saying that shit in between is gonna go it's gonna fly unless you're at a camp where you feel like you're in a dead stop where ain't nothing happening ain't nothing shaking ain't nothing going on it's just a dead boom you know what I'm saying it's like being in an area where electricity's out that's how it feels <laughs> you know what I'm saying but 
being at DeSoto, you know, since you get close to your release date, you go to thinking more and more about it. You know, you go to changing what you're going to do when you first get out. When I first, the day I get out them gates, this is what I'm going to do first. This is what I'm going to eat. This is where I'm going to go. This is what hoe I'm going to smash. This is where I'm going to go do this to get a job. I'm going to do this. You got all these different things on your mind that you're going to change a thousand times before you even get released. You see what I'm saying? And you can't help it. That's just what it is. Your mind, even though you got a hundred days to go, since you got a little over three months left, your mind is going to be so focused on them streets that you're about to walk outside them gates that your time is going to drag. You feel me? And then that last week, them last seven days inside of prison are going to be the longest ever. Them seven days, your last seven days inside of prison are going to feel longer than your entire bid combined. Literally, you're never ever going to think of your time or the streets more than that last week. When that last week comes, oh my God, you feel like, oh, I'm going to sleep it away. Then you can't even sleep it away because you're still thinking about it. You're laying there in the dark in your cell thinking about it. You feel me? You fall asleep, wake up. It's only been two, three hours. You're thinking about it. Like that right there is the hardest time, you know what I'm saying, to me. Literally, I feel like them long stretches, them long stretches, you know, that shit be so far away that you, you don't even really be thinking about it. You feel me? When it's far away like that, you don't even think about it. That's just like when you go to confinement. If you go back there for 120 days, 60 days, you know, you're not really thinking about when you get out. But once you get down to them last five days, last week, or if you got sentenced to only 15 days back there, that shit's going to drag. That is the hardest time possible. The end of your sentence is the hardest time possible. It's even harder than the beginning. You know, to me, that this is my opinion, okay? Now, you would think about it like, well, how? In the beginning of your bid, you know, that shit's going slow because you're, you're trying to adapt. You're trying to get used to it. You got to settle and get familiar with the environment. You got to get known to the way shit goes down at this institution what prisons all like you know what i'm saying you got to learn the ins and outs figure out what's what you know but then after a while you know you're gonna learn it like that even if no one tells you you're gonna learn it just by observing you think about it you see fucking 10 people standing in line over there at that building you don't know what that building is but then you see everybody walking with mattresses or laundry bags or, 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 or piles of fucking clothes. That's going to let you know that's laundry. You see, you're going to learn. You see people all going in there, coming out, fucking wiping their mouth. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or standing in there with trays. You know, that's the chow hall. You see a bunch of people that look like nurses walking into that building right there. Let you know that's medical. You see a building that's got a pitch on it like this with a cross at the top. You're going to know that's chapel. You see, like, you're, you're going to learn all these things just by looking. Nobody even has to tell you anything. You feel me? And I feel like when you first go to prison, trying to adapt and learn the cycle of prison, and, you know, you're not familiar with being away from your peoples that long, or you just got to learn how this institution is ran, that kind of, like, makes your time drag, you know, a little bit because you're trying to get familiar with it but as you're trying to get familiar with what's taking place in-house on the institution you actually got your mind off of the streets you're not thinking about the streets right now because you're thinking about learning how to adapt to everything that you have to learn in order to make it through this bid you see that's helps you you know even though not that much time will go by by the time you finally figure everything out but it gets your mind off the time while you're going through it you see what i'm saying and then due to the fact that you just got sentenced, you just got off the streets or you just got your time handed to you by the judge, that's going to make it to where you're dwelling on your bid still. You're still trying to cope with the time they handed you, the numbers they gave you. If you got five years in prison, they gave you 60 months. Your first year, you're going to be dwelling on that. Damn, I got 60 months, though. You know, you're going to be thinking about that. You know, that's why the first year goes by so slow because you're still trying to hold on to the streets. You're still trying to keep your hands around, you know, the mix of what's going on out there. And you haven't realized to let go of that. Focus on surviving in here. You feel me? 
And then once you finally do that, that's when your time starts going. You feel me? In between your first year and your last year, all that time in between is going to all feel like the same. No matter where you go, how your time moves, you're going to always remember how slow your first year was and how fucking slow your last year was. You see what I'm saying? And to me, I feel like the less violent of a camp, the slower the time goes. Believe it or not. It's like being in detention. Like if you had detentions in, inside of your school when you were younger and you got to just sit there and you hear the clock ticking and you see the hour hand going around every time it's clicking and shit and you're just sitting there and it just feels like dead time, like this shit's boring. That's what non-violent camps are like. Literally, that you're just sitting there and it's it's it's... It just feels like you're in a daycare. You know what I'm saying? It literally does. It, it's like you're you're going to be in one of these institutions that are so like to you that's laid back. You know, that's where there's no problems, you know, and there's nothing to worry about. You know, you just do your time, right? It's going to dead ass feel like you're sitting in neutral. Like it's going to feel like you were dead ass living in detention and you're going to be thinking about the streets so much. Literally, just because you ain't got shit to worry about or get your mind off the streets while you're in there. You know what I'm saying? And me, that's how DeSoto was. Now, institutions change, though. Like I said, this is my opinion right here on what's the hardest time in prison. Okay? Institutions change. Because I've heard numerous stories from homeboys of mine that have been to prison before me that went to DeSoto. And they told me DeSoto was once ratchet. You see what I'm saying? That's why you can't just go off of, you know, my 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 experience alone. Because I tell y'all this all the time. Institutions swap. You know what I'm saying? It only takes a couple of ratchet people to get moved. And next thing you know, that institution's cranked. You feel me? So, it all depends though. It's kind of like where you land at. If that camp is ratchet at the time, your time is going to fly. You know, because at the end of the day... People consider camp sweet for different reasons, all right? So let me break this down. You might do your time way different than I do my time, correct? Correct. Now, if you're doing your time to where all you care about is going to chow and all you care about is going to rec and all you care about is hitting canteen and the barbershop and stuff like that, you might land in an institution that opens yard every day. When yard's open, that's when barbershop canteen and rec those three are open so you might go to a camp that they do that every single day where the guards do not buck the inmates on that privilege at all you get to go there every single day they pop yard they open canteen everything that right there is a good thing you know but not every camp does that you see what i'm saying there's more than one dorm of course so some camps you go to they do it in order you know, like this dorm, then that dorm, then that dorm, then that dorm. Or they do it on who the fuck ain't had that many problems lately. They go first. Or who got the best cell inspections. They go. Or some people, you know, you might only get to hit canteen two, three times a week. You see? So you might feel like your institution is sweet because you can do those every single day. But it might be a top of the line violent camp. There might be stabbings and, and wars, riots, rapes, extortions, you know, all types of different things going on at the institution that allows those things every single day. The wreck, the barbershop, and the canteen, you feel me? So, you'll be telling people that the camp's sweet because you're labeling it as sweet due to the fact that yard is open every day. Another person who is scared, who don't want to be in a violent camp that's never been to that institution you are referring to to being sweet, is going to take that information the wrong way. They're going to think you're saying it's sweet as far as it's nonviolent. It's laid back. There's no problems. They just are worried about going to a camp that isn't drama-like, that isn't dangerous. You see what I'm saying? To them, that's a sweet camp. They're not... Labeling it as sweet camp due to the fact yards open every day. They're labeling it a sweet camp because they want to go to a camp where there's no drama, where there's no problems. But now that you told that person that that camp's sweet because you're labeling it sweet due to yard being open, they're going to feel like it's sweet 
and they're going to start spreading word, oh, I heard such and such was a sweet camp too. And then it starts going around, and then they start they start spreading it. Every time they see someone, oh, yeah, I ain't been there, but someone that just came from there told me it was sweet. So next thing you know, it gets to your ears, and you hear this camp sweet. So it depends on how you do your time, like I was saying. If you're one of them people that only are caring about hitting canteen, barbershop, and going to wreck, or if you're one of them people that don't want drama, that are scared, that don't want to get stabbed or hurt or be in the mix. Those are two different ways that camps are compared to be sweet. So you might get misinformed. You feel me? Like me. When I first was going to Calhoun, I heard Calhoun sucked. Like me, on my way up there, someone was like, man, I've been to Calhoun before, yada, 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 man. That shit ain't where it's at, da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, what, it's a sweet camp? Hell no, nah, it ain't no sweet camp, dog. This shit sucks, dog. I'd rather go to any camp but this one. Da, 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 da. So from what I'm hearing, I'm thinking like, damn, this shit's, you know, this shit's got to be ratchet. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, also people ain't going to keep it thorough with you. They're not going to keep it 100. They always want you to feel like they did the hardest time or they've been through the worst. So they're going to always throw a little more in there to make it seem like it's worse than it really is. So when I'm hearing this shit, I'm thinking like, okay, well, in my mind, I don't give a damn about canteen. I don't care about the barbershop. I don't care about wreck. None of that shit. Me, I'm trying to see what I'm getting myself involved in with the danger. You feel me? So when I'm trying to find out, is it a sweet camp or not? I'm, I'm looking at it as if, is it sweet to where it's non-dangerous? And then I'm hearing, oh, man, camp's fucked up. This and that, I'm telling you, bro. Well, I can't believe they're sending me back here, yada, yada. So then when I'm going there, bitch, I'm, you know, I got my chest out. Because here, I'm, I'm only going off of somebody's word that's already been to this institution. You feel me? And when I go there, that shit wasn't what I was told it was. You feel me? It was a messed up camp because we never hit canteen like that. We barely got to hit canteen. They bucked us a lot on canteen. You see what I'm saying? That's how it was a messed up camp. You feel me? And then Charlotte, you know, yeah, we hit canteen, barbershop, wreck, faithfully all the time, every single day, but it was a dangerous ass camp. Inmates ran that camp. Shit went on left and right. Every single day there was something going on. You see what I'm saying? And that's one of those places where you're like, damn, my time's flying at the end of the day, but you know, it, it it's, it's a dangerous environment, you see what I'm saying? So I just wanted to make this video for y'all because I wanted to tell y'all, from my opinion, the worst time for me is a non-violent camp where there ain't shit going on and at the end of my bid. And it happened to be DeSoto at the time for me. If you're someone else that does your time different, drop in the comment section, that's what it's there for, you know what I'm saying? Let people know or if you can relate, you feel me? If you did a time before and you know for a fact the beginning of your bid and the end of your bid is what dragged the most, drop it in the comments, man. Let people know you can relate, you feel me? Or if you got a game plan for how you make your time go by. You know, I got a lot of people that watch my videos that may possibly be looking at time. You know, when I look at my analytics and I look at the age difference and stuff, I look and I, I can see the age brackets from what people listed their ages when they created their emails and their YouTube. So I can literally see how big my audience is amongst different ages. And I get messages every single day, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Instagram, no matter where it is, I get messages from people who are like, man, I'm looking at some time. I need your opinion, yada, yada, yada. So the comment section plays a major part over here on my channel because people literally will read your opinion okay not just me you feel me but people out there in general so drop in the comments let me know what you think what was the best solution for you what was the worst time for you when you were locked up or what would your opinion be as far as if you were facing time would you rather go to a ratchet camp or a non-violent camp I know the answer to that, a lot of people are going to pick non-violent. Like, why would you want to get put in a dangerous situation if you had, you know, the chance to choose? You feel me? But you don't have the chance to choose in all reality. When it comes down, you're either going to get thrown in that jungle or you're going to get the luck of the draw and you're going to get thrown in there with the kitty cats. You see, so it's all on where you land at and how it is you feel me but anyways y'all i appreciate y'all tuning in appreciate y'all being patient i know i ain't been on in a couple days but 
You know, like I said, man, shit happens. I hope everybody had a great Halloween. One other thing that I want to mention, though, before I do wrap this video on up is for those that have been watching me for a while, y'all know that one of the main institutions that I was at that I got a lot of my footage in was Charlotte CI, correct? If you've been here for a while, then y'all know I talk about Charlotte CI so many different times. I break it down and I try to let y'all know what it was truly like at the institution that I was at, you know, which is a dangerous ass camp, okay? Well, not that long ago, I want to say maybe a month ago, you know, I've been wanting to mention this in a video, but we actually had a huge, you know, drug bust down here in the state of Florida, all right? And they actually got caught with enough fentanyl to kill half of Florida, all right? I actually mentioned this in my live that I did yesterday with everybody, so if you was in there in my live, you remember me mentioning this. Well, when I talk about Charlotte CI and how dangerous Charlotte CI is and how it was when I was in there, you know, and I've been talking about this shit for years, right? Well, this big drug bust that they just did in Florida, which y'all feel free to look it up so y'all know what I'm talking about. Just look up fentanyl bust, enough fentanyl to kill half of Florida. And I want y'all to see how the kingpin who was behind that operation, you feel me? The person who they've caught behind that operation that just took place was running the operation from inside of Charlotte CI. The same institution that I record majority of my footage at. That's how you know how dangerous prison is. Okay, I'm not talking down on the people that got arrested or got caught, you know, or anything like that. But I just want to break it down and let y'all understand that how dangerous prison really is. You know what I'm saying? You never know the strings people can pull from inside, even behind a fence. And then even behind a wall. Even behind a steel door. You see what I'm saying? But if you look it up, you'll see. The kingpin who was running the operation was running it from behind bars down here in the state of Florida at Charlotte CI. You see what I'm saying? And that right there is where you see majority of my footage at. You feel me? That's how you know. That shit is dangerous. I always talked about how dangerous Charlotte CI was. You know what I'm saying? And it is. You know what I'm saying? And it isn't just Charlotte. You know, and it isn't just Florida. All around the world. Okay? I say this a lot. I do these videos for the people that are watching. I don't, I don't come over here all the time and do these videos for me no more. I come over here and I do these videos for people watching because I want people to know what prison's truly like. My gaming, k for all gaming, that's for me. That's what I do for me. You see, I come over here because I know there's a lot of younger crowd and there's people who made mistakes in life that hopefully can learn before it's too late. You see what I'm saying? So my voice is for y'all. You feel me? But anyways, I'm going to wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all tuning in. I want to throw that in there at the end. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like, subscribe button on the way out if you ain't hit it on the way in. Keep them squares, rats, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, clout chasers, lying ass people on YouTube. Keep them motherfucking weirdos, man. There's like a there's like a like a bunch of them. They all click together. They all like got like flaws in them and shit. And they all like whether it's a rat, a snake, a fucking snitch, a a, a, a booger, a, a sissy. You know, they, they all seem to like hang out together. You know what I'm saying? Keep people like that out your circle, man. Get you some money, stay to yourself. And remember at the end of the day, ain't no bunk beds and caskets. You are your team. You feel me? You be the backbone of every situation you got going on, man. And don't ever look for somebody else to take care of what you got going on. Never have your hand out. You just do what you got to do and you'll be straight. Anyways, appreciate y'all watching. Till next time, you already know, I am my team, this frog.